Hey guys, welcome back. I just picked up this Volvo behind me. Um, customer didn't want to fix it. It just needed some radiator hoses, a thermostat. So got that stuff taken care of. Went and drove it, it felt a little underpowered. Now low end torque is great. Get to the top end and it kind of falls on its face. I mean, it, it doesn't fall on its face, it tapers off. It doesn't have any top end power. It is turbocharged. I'm not super familiar with how these are supposed to run. We have a few customers with them. Um, I don't know, it seems like it should have a little more top end power, being that it has a turbocharger. It's got an inline five, so sh that should give it the low end torque. So I'm gonna pl plug in, actually I just plugged it in, the Diagon, we're gonna scan it. Um, there's no check engine light, there's no warning lights on at all. Uh, we'll see if there's codes first. If there are no codes, or even if there is codes, we'll probably go out and see if we can uh, data log the boost, find out if that turbocharger is actually working. There's a few other sensors I normally look at, like the mass airflow, uh, uh, fuel trim, stuff like that, to find out if we have a uh, another issue causing our low power. But that'll give us our mass airflow, boost, um, find out if we're running rich or lean, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we have the launch interface plugged in down there on the data link connector. I have the key in the on position. Oops, let's push the button here. I'm not sure what module I went into. Um, ECM. Now, normally I do a full system scan, but today we're just gonna jump right into the engine controller, read fault codes. So if it has a P, it's permanent, I, intermittent. Okay. I don't see the, any of those listed on here, but so these are Volvo specific. These are not the uh, OBD2 codes. So we have communication with a central electronic module. Now that could be a voltage induced code, who knows, there's no warning lights on. Brake pedal sensor, signal via CAN. So that brake pedal sensor is probably fed into another module and that signal gets over to the ECM. And it's possible that goes to the central electronic module, but I would think that it would go to the ABS. And we have a turbocharger code. So control system, signal too high. So I don't know if this is the, the wastegate control solenoid. I'm not sure on that code. Um, I believe if we hit the search button, it just takes us to Google. And since I don't know where that'll take us and what images will show up, I'm not gonna click on that and have something come up that I'm not allowed to use. So I guess we'll jump on the computer, see what that code really means. Um, see if that is a electrical code or a mechanical operation code. So as we can see here, there is the factory code and there is the generic code over here on the left. Um, let's go ahead and click on that and see, uh, see what the fault set um, criteria is. Okay, ECM checks the boost pressure diagnostic trouble code stored. If the measured boost pressure from the boost pressure sensor is higher than the control module target value or the desired value. So this is an over boost code. Reduce boost pressure through full opening of boost pressure control valve. Okay, so it's gonna try and reduce the boost pressure and that could be what we're seeing. Um, pressure servo for the boost control, so control valve is incorrectly adjusted. Um, that's on the wastegate sticking boost pressure control valve or a damaged turbocharger control valve. This is the electrical valve. Fault poor performance, signal too high. So the control valve must click when it's activated. Now we're not gonna go real far into this today. I might do a future video on testing this. It's uh, the engine's kind of hot right now, um, but we can use the Diagon, see if we can control that, see if we hear it clicking. Okay, so I located the solenoid. Uh, I had to look with a mirror, but we can see the wastegate control diaphragm right there. Let me zoom in for you, maybe. And there's a vacuum line that comes off right here, and it goes down, and the electronic valve is mounted down below that. So we're gonna jump in here, turbo control valve on. Okay, and I don't know if this is going to cycle it or just turn it on. 
and then off. I guess that's it. Okay, so I have to click it on and off manually each time. I'm gonna stick the camera down there, um, try not to burn my hand, but see if you guys can pick up the sound that's coming from that solenoid. Did you guys hear it? Because I heard it once and then I couldn't get it to act up again or I couldn't get it to click again. So it's quite possible that that solenoid is bad. Now I actually have another Volvo at home. I, what's it, a C30? I don't know, it's the car that Edward Cullen drives. I bought it with a blown up motor. So the engine's actually sitting on a pallet outside. I'm gonna go look at that engine and hopefully it has a solenoid on it because that might mean that I have a spare. Okay, so unfortunately the junkyard motor, they took the turbo off of. The first one had a turbo and I expected the second one to as well, but it does not. But here's the engine I took out of it. Sorry for the wind. This one here is the solenoid. So we have three vacuum lines, one coming out the back here and two out the front. I don't know if there's a way that we can uh, check this with vacuum, just having the one port. Where does it go? It goes right over here to the intake. That's possible that we could try to pump it up and then actuate the solenoid and see if it bleeds off the vacuum. But if that solenoid is sticking, in one position, it could be causing it to go full boost and keep that wastegate um, completely closed. I say we just pull up some data on the scanner, go drive it, see what our desired versus actual boost is, and then we'll figure out from there what we need to do. More than likely, I'll have to order one of those solenoids or, or at least uh, pull it out of the vehicle to test it. Okay, got the vehicle running just to make sure that I don't lose anything when I start it up. Um, let's do ambient air pressure, boost pressure, engine speed. So I don't see desired turbo. But let's see if that'll give us what we need. Now these numbers may look off to you. Our 820 HPA, I'm not sure what HPA is, but um, I'm at 5,200 feet of elevation. My atmospheric pressure is about 24 inches of mercury or 84 to 88 kPa. I'm guessing that HPA is somewhere along those same lines, but um, just with a, a different zero at the end. So we have no boost right now. We're showing our boost being the same as our ambient air pressure. I'm not sure where the boost sensor is. It might be in the intercooler, which is why we're not showing a um, lack of pressure or engine vacuum. So it is reading just in the in the bay revving it up let's go ahead and shut this hood down and go for a drive 1850 1940 2020 2030 2030 and you got one cop after you <laughs> okay so 2030 is going to be just over two bar. One bar equals 14.7 pounds. So I'm probably running 16-ish pounds of boost and I'm suspecting that that's higher than normal. Hold over on the side of the road. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear the coats. Since it has a turbo control code in there, it may not be trying to operate correctly. So we're gonna clear fault codes. I did save them. Okay, so I'm going to shut the key back off. We'll restart it 
make sure we don't have any codes. So no codes are set. <laughs> this is the wobbliest filming in the world. Okay, what do we get? On what? Duty cycle. You didn't tell me to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I was looking at boost pressure. We can't even see duty cycle because you're recording. Okay, so in the short period of time, it did set that same code. So I think that's why it's limiting boost because if I if I pull over and clear the code, then I get one good bit of acceleration before it loses power again. So as soon as it loses power, um, that code has been set and it's reducing power to limit the amount of boost that we're building. So after we get back into town, which will be later this evening, we'll go ahead and do some further testing on that solenoid. Um, I might just do a whole other video on it. I just wanted to verify, see what we were getting for boost. I might rob the solenoid off my other engine uh, just to get this one up and running because I don't even know when I'm gonna get the other car going. And we'll go from there. Now, what I did want to let you guys know is this, actually, I don't know if it's this launch, but a lot of the bigger launch tablets are actually on the Black Friday sale. Um, I'll put a link down below for that sale. I think PJ over at Voltage Drop Diagnostic uh, mentioned it in one of his videos, but they're posting up the ads early, and then I think you have to order on Black Friday, but I'll put a link to that down below so you guys can find that. I think you save like a hundred bucks off of one of these, um, not this one, the tablet one. And that's a pretty good deal. So look for the next video if we come out with one and uh, check out that link. If you have any questions or comments, put those down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.